So I get quite a few offers to review different types of batteries and stuff. And honestly, a lot of them I turned down because I just don't know about them. I've done a review. I, I got a review model of the Renergy battery. I've got a Go Kilowatt Hour battery that I just recently did a review on. That one interested me because of the display on top. Renergy is just a, a good, reputable brand. But I've been looking to upgrade my battery bank from 100 amp hours to 200 amp hours. And th the Power Queen was one of the top three or four on my list. So I asked them, hey, could you send me one and then I will buy one and I will set up my battery bank that way. And they agreed. So I want to review this battery today. So in this video today, what we'll do is we'll go over this battery, some of the specs. We'll talk about what my plans are for it, who this might be good for and who it might not be good for. And then I'll show you how I've got my current setup and everything uh, put together. We'll also do a little bit of testing. I've got a few different appliances down here. We'll plug it into that 1500 watt inverter there and test and see how this works. So first off, the, the battery is fairly light. When you think about the lead acid battery alternatives, a lot of people use these for trolling motors, things like that. You can put it in a battery box. This is a group 31 size right here, but it's a whole lot le lighter than the, you know, if you've ever picked up a lead acid battery, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So they're pretty light. This little strap right here comes off really easily. So if you are putting it in a battery box or using it like I've got my setup, uh, you can just tuck these away and use them uh, and not have to use them. It does come with a five year warranty, which is a decent warranty. And the cells in these, I tested this, I ran it all the way down to zero after charging it to 100%. And these came out at 104 amp hours, just around 104 amp hours, which from what I've read, is indicative of grade A cells. So these are good cells. The BMS inside is good. So for a low cost or a, one of the lower cost batteries, uh, it is pretty nice. Now with these lower cost batteries, there's probably hundreds on Amazon and you don't know what you're getting from what. A few that I have seen good reviews on are the Power Queens, the Lie Times, LI Time, the Chins, the Redotos, there's a few out there that are these lower cost models that are pretty good, but the other ones, you just don't know what you're gonna get. With my Go Kilowatt battery, that only had, when I drained that, I did a discharge test, it only had 100 amp hours, 99.5, which tells me those are not grade A cells. Now with that, I don't wanna break this open because I plan on using this and I plan on testing this out over the course of a year or so. And if anything does happen, uh, I wanna let everyone know. But I did find a really cool video, somebody that broke this down, he actually cut this top open. This is IP65 rated, uh, completely waterproof. You can't dunk it in the river or anything like that, but it is weatherproof so it could be used outdoors. But he cut this top open and looked inside and the construction, while there is a little bit of extra room and I, I assume that's because they put this in the, the group 31 size rather than uh, the smaller size, but there is some room, but it's packed really well. Let me play a little bit of that video here uh, so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, here's the BMS board. It looks pretty nice. It does use heavy 10 gauge cables, which is appropriate for this BMS. They're using all good hardware. Everything's glued down. Like even these edges here were glued down. Everything's glued. Even the little BMS sensors were glued. You can see right here on the terminals, even those are glued down. So they're not taking any chances. Now, honestly, this is as far as I need to go because now we can see what kind of cells they're using. We see what kind of BMS they're using. Uh, the construction is very well done. Very good construction for such a cheap battery. So hopefully we can zoom in on that and get a clear ID of what these cells are. Now I was able to find these cells for sale. It's 184 bucks for four raw cells. That's no BMS or anything else. It does say it's grade A. It seems like Ganfen is a decent brand. All right, so it, it looks like it's pretty well made. It's got good components. So it's not one of those, you know, the, the using subpar parts, I suppose. One of those batteries that uses 
grade B cells or refurbished cells or whatever they do. Uh, these are actually grade A cells. It's got a good BMS and it's packaged with the high density foam. Everything's really good. So with that, what I want to do is run some tests down here. What I'm going to do is plug in that 1500 watt inverter and then we'll test out a couple things just to see how this works. And then what we'll do is I'll take you upstairs to where I have my DIY power station and I'll show you how I'm going to use this. All right, so I've got this inverter right here hooked up to the battery. I also put this shunt on here so you can sort of see what's going on with this. So you can see right now we're pulling zero amps. If I were to turn this on, we're at 1.58. So what I want to do is plug a couple things in. And the first thing I want to do is this little heat gun right here is 300 watts. So we will plug this in and see what we get out of this. So at 300 watts, we're pulling 20, we're pulling 20 amps out of here. which this will run all day long. So let's take this off. And I wanna do something that has, that takes a little bit more juice. And that is this hot plate right here. The, this is really the only thing I've ever used this hot plate for is testing. And probably the only thing I ever will use it for because it just takes too much power for it to actually be useful. So as you can see right here, we turn this on and let's go back to the amps. If I were to turn this on, we're using 100 amps out of this right now. And this is rated, and you can hear the fan on there. So we're using almost 100 amps at right now. This BMS is rated to 100 amps. I The video that I played earlier, he got it up to about 150 for a couple minutes but probably around 120 is what you're looking at. So uh, this is something I would not use. This is basically, you're using this for an hour and that's this battery is dead. You can see right here, this, this, the amp hours are going down pretty damn fast. So this is not something you would want to use in some sort of emergency or disaster. There are plenty of other cooking options out there. But I just wanted to show that it will go up to the 100 amps that it's supposed to. So for what my needs are, I'm pretty pleased with this and, and we'll see how it works out in the future. But it seems like a really good battery for the price that we're set at. Uh, again, there are just a number of different batteries. So just be careful what you're getting. As far as who this is for and who it's not, I want to talk about that a little bit because... Depending on your situation, you may not need to go with that super expensive battery. Or you may not want to go with something that may not have the lifespan of something that, or the reputation that some of the, the Battleborns or even possibly the Renergies would have. But for my situation, uh, and I will go upstairs here in a second and show you how I have this set up. For my situation, this is not something I'm going to use on a daily basis. So it's not something, if it does fail on me, it's not going to be a complete disaster, right? I'm not going to be stuck on the side of the road or I'm not going to be without energy while I'm living off grid. For my situation, this is an emergency battery. I'm going to use it to run a couple of smaller things, but my main thing is to have this in the event of a blackout, in the event of a grid down event, something that, that I can use uh, just periodically. So the lifespan to me is less important than for somebody that may be using this in an off-grid system. So, and also this doesn't have low temperature cutoff. So having it outside in different situations may not work as well. You would want a battery that has that. But if you are in a situation where you're just putting like a DIY battery bank together like me, or you just want some extra power, then this is absolutely perfect. With this inverter right here and this power queen right here, you're looking at something exactly the same as a Jackery. You're looking at 1500 watts and you're looking at 100 amp hours of energy that you can use. 
and also you can take this inverter and plug it into your car so you've got that as well. Now you can't use 15, you, you shouldn't use 1500 watts out of your car battery because you're just gonna drain your battery, but you can use your car to get a little bit of energy to run your refrigerator or something like that as well. So in my opinion, having one of these and having one of these, I think is the better option than buying a all-in-one Jackery because you can use this for a couple different reasons. And if this battery does go bad or this inverter goes bad, you're replacing one or the other. You're not replacing the whole unit. So that's why I decided to go this route with these and set up my battery bank. This inverter right here sits on the side and is for those emergency situations where maybe I do plug it into here or maybe I do plug it into my automobile and make sure you have extra gas stored and make sure your vehicle's running as well. Otherwise, you're just gonna drain your car battery. Uh, and car batteries don't like to be drained to 100% like Life PO4 batteries don't mind it. So at any rate, that's it with this. What I'm gonna do is take you upstairs and show you exactly what I did with my system, with these two Life PO4 batteries that I got, uh, and show you how I'm, I plan on using this stuff. All right, so here is the setup that I have, what I'm currently doing with these two 100 amp hour batteries. Now, when I originally had this set up, I got the a lot of Renergy products. Renergy sent me the, the 1000 watt inverter, and also this 100 amp hour battery, which I'm going to use to put in this milk crate right here, put a little charge controller in there, put an inverter in here, and something that can be portable and carried around. It's a really good battery, it's a smart battery, but I didn't wanna buy a second one at this price for this unit right here. So I went with the Power Queen and used both of these right here. I've got it strapped on. This is put together, this is on a dolly right here, that way, I can move this around if I need to. But with this, I'm not gonna go through all the technical stuff with it. There's a, a City Prepper has a really good video about how to put all this stuff together, uh, a step-by-step -step video, which is fantastic. And it's pretty similar to what I did here. But with this little setup, what I wanted was the ability to charge it by solar. So I've got this right here, which plugs in to the solar panels that I have outside. And right now I have 200 watt solar panels. Uh, pretty soon I'll have three, maybe even four. And you'll see as this kicks back in, it's, it's today it's sort of overcast. So I'm getting between you know five and seven amps. But with this, I have the ability to charge it with solar. I also have the AC port over here. I have the DC side of things where I can plug this it's got the USB chargers, a cigarette lighter port. I can turn this off and on when I'm not using it. And then, like I said, the 1,000 watt inverter. The reason I only have a 1,000 watt inverter on here is a couple of reasons. The, the size of the wires are set up for this 1,000 watts, and I don't want to pull more than 1,000 watts out of this because it just drains, it would drain these too quickly. If I had these set up where I could pull 2,000 watts, that's basically two hours of with these batteries, and I want these to be able to last. Uh, right now, I've got it set up where I've got my chest freezer hooked up. And with the chest freezer hooked up, it doesn't take much energy at all. I've also got this Victron Smart Shunt right here and this app right here. And if you look at the app right here, it tells you that right now I'm at 91%, 13.48 uh, volts, this is the output. Right now I've got nine and a half amps coming in. So with the solar, even though that says uh, 7.24, uh, this says 9.5, I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, the freezer that is hooked up to it is off right now, so this is all incoming. Let's say, I was to turn on, let me get over here. I've got this little heat gun right here. If I were to turn this heat gun on, you can see it goes down to minus 12 amps. If I turn that off, this heat gun runs about 300 watts. So if we're at 130 watts, turn this heat gun on and we're minus 160, so 
290 amps is what that's running. So a pretty cool app that lets you know the, the status of your system. And the history is pretty cool as well. It says the deepest depth of discharge was 33 amp hours. And all I have on this right now, other than that little heat gun and a couple batteries, is the chest freezer. Uh, so this was the first day. The second day was 31 amp hours discharged. So it takes about 15% of this battery to run my chest freezer, which is pretty good. In the future, I'll, I'll be adding to this and seeing what I can do. But it takes at 15%, it takes about three quarters, a half to three quarters of a day to fill this back up to 100%. Uh, and then I, as I run that 24 hours, even on a cloudy day, I should still be able to do that. I'm going to run this for a few weeks and get some, some really good numbers and see what I can add to this afterwards. But the Smart Shunt is, is pretty cool. It's optional to put on your little system, but it is pretty cool to give you all the information you need. But that's my setup right here. Uh, like I said, these two power queens, I'm gonna be using these constantly over the next month or so, even longer than that, as long as they work out. But if they do, if something does happen, I'll make sure and update everybody. But right now I'm pretty pleased with them. The group 31 size is pretty good for this. You can lean this back and you could even put this on its back, I'll work on some of these components. I've got an on and off switch right here, which shuts the battery power off. So. Pretty happy with the way this is, the 200 amp hours on this setup. Like I said, this is a work in progress. It started out with one Renergy battery, moved up to two here. I could actually put four on here if I wanted to. But once I get to that point, I'm going to get batteries. Uh, these can't go out in the garage. They don't have the low temperature cutoff. So I'm going to get batteries that can, and I will end up building something in the garage that is more permanent this is sort of out in the open. This is more of a learning tool than a, you know, something that looks nice. I could put a box around it if I wanted to, but that's what I'll do in the garage when I set this up to be able to run the well pump in any sort of situation where the power is out. So that's it with this. Like I said, check out City Prepper's channel. He's got a great video on this. If you do have any questions about any of the different components, the Power Queen batteries, anything like that, uh, make sure and leave a comment below or, or get a hold of me at dale at thebugoutlocation.net. But with that, take care and prepare, everyone. We will talk to you all later.